The pandemic has changed a lot for artists in all walks of life and all musical styles. Keith Wallen, no different. Of course, you know him from Breaking Benjamin, but he has his own solo stuff out. His latest single, Dream Away, is out, but he's been sitting on it for a bit because of the pandemic. So we'll talk to him about the new single, the new album, and much more. It's Keith Wallen on the Styles Cast. Cast, ooh, if I could talk today. Welcome aboard. <laughs> It's so cold, I can't talk for nothing right now. Keith Wallen, man, thanks you so much for coming on and being a part of the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, man, it's been uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it has. I I was trying to think before we got on here. The last time you and I have physically seen each other, it's probably been a uh, a very long hot minute <laughs> since a Breaking Benjamin tour that you and I crossed paths. But uh, you've been out touring the world nonstop since you joined the band. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a busy uh, gosh. I want to say six years now. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, doesn't seem like it's been that long. But um, yeah, we've been uh, we've been hitting it hard and heavy. And uh, so you know, it's it's funny. This uh, it's it's nice to have a break, obviously, um, mm -hmm. but uh, the circumstances are not ideal. It's one thing to kind of have a break, and we you know it was on our terms, and we decided to kind of take a little break and. And uh, but when it's forced upon you, it's a different kind of story. No doubt. And I believe you guys were just wrapping up your tour at the time when everything started to shut down. Right. Yeah. Like just wrapping up. I mean, we we you know, I got home on March 1st and, you know, two weeks later, the you know, Tom Hanks has the coronavirus. The NBA is shut down. The whole world stopping. And so it was just like, wow, that was uh, that was crazy. But um yeah, I was really thankful to get that last one in. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't know at the time that it would be the last one for a while, but uh, it turned out to be that. And how's life at home been for you? You and I, before jumping out here, you were saying, you know, like the walls have all starting to close in on you. Babe. <laughs> but uh, outside of that part, how's life at home been for you during this time? Well, look, it's it's not too bad. You know, I'm, I'm very thankful to, uh, you know, have a roof and have walls. Uh, so... Uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's been, it's been tough, but you know, there's a, definitely a lot tougher and harder situations out there for people. So I try to, uh, stay optimistic and look at the, the bright side, the positive aspects of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a tough year. Uh, been a lot of, uh, a lot of writing, a lot of working on music and stuff. Uh, I feel like I've, I've, I made this joke to people like I feel like I've finished Netflix. I've <laughs> watched everything that you could possibly watch. Uh, yeah, so they need to release some more stuff so I can have something to do. Yeah, no doubt. I I, I love that uh, there is content coming out on all those services, but at the same time though, like I'm a binger, so I love watching things in a weekend. And <laughs> I, I love Disney's WandaVision, but I hate the fact that it's weekly episodes. Like, can I just do this and then give me another show next week and you know, I want to be able to just do it all in one shot. So I'm not sitting around all weekend going, well, what am I going to watch next? I've watched everything else. Yeah. And then they, you know, it's always a cliffhanger. You're like, no, you can't end it like that. <sighs> you just got to wait. Exactly. I always feel bad too. Cause like, uh, there's a couple of shows my wife and I were watching. You get through like a season one or a season two and you're like, all right, cool. We'll wait for a season next one, whatever it might be. Then you get the news. Oh, they canceled it. It's like, I just invested all that time <laughs> for nothing, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's no. rough. You know, you talk about writing all that music. Of course, your new single, Dream Away, is out now. But uh, I read that you had been actually sitting on that thing for about a year or so. It's just been various computers, hard drives, or whatever have you. Yeah, we, uh, me and my producer, uh, Joe Rickard, um, who's a good friend of mine. We've known each other for a while now. Uh, we, we actually started the recording process uh, last January. And so really we, we pretty much had it for the most part all recorded, uh, before that last tour started. Um, during the tour, I was, I was, uh, lucky enough to get Aaron, uh, Brooke who, you know, plays bass and breaking band. He was, uh, gracious enough to lend his talents, uh, on the bass playing duties on the album. So that was, that was really, uh, fortunate of me to get that. And for him to do that was amazing. Yeah. I, uh, that couple weeks on tour, I had him record there in green rooms and stuff uh, while we were waiting to play every night. So, so that was fun. But 
yeah, it took a little bit to get uh, uh, everything mixed and uh, mastered and all that. But um, yeah, it was for the most part just sitting on my computer this whole year. I, I've been telling people and I and 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 you know, like I could have released it in 2020, but the year was so awful. I just was like, you know what? I don't want the year 2020 on the album forever. So I'm just like, <laughs> I just want to get that year over with, start fresh, 2021. All right, let's do this, you know? So there you go. Perfect. Not have that number associated at all. You mentioned Aaron there. Did you record any of the album yourself, your parts in the green rooms across the country while touring? I did not. Uh, no, I, I have before and, and other, other things I've done, but, um, yeah, this one we we really just kind of um, hold up there last January here at my house, and um, yeah, got most of it done here. We we went to Nashville to do the drums, but other than that, yeah. Okay, and Joe, who you mentioned, produced the record with you, also did some co-writing with you. He used to be, if I remember correctly, and I, I if I if I am right, he was in Red, and that's where I would know him best from, at least in my world. Yes. Um, and he's also played in Flames. So how did you two meet and how did you come to go, hey, work with me on this record? Yeah. Uh, so I met him probably, gosh, 10, 10 years ago. Okay. He was, uh, I think he was he was with Red at the time. And uh, a friend of mine, Mark, who plays in Sick Puppies, we were on tour. Adelita's His Way was on tour with Sick Puppies. And and uh, he was like, yeah, my friend Joe's going to hang out. Uh you know, so I met him then and, um, you know, obviously through Red, you know, he knew Jason and Jason's now, you know, one of our uh, guitar players in Breaking Band. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was kind of like, uh, you know, it's a small world, you know, you kind of meet different people and you're like, oh, you know him? Hell yeah. So, yeah. It is, it is a small world indeed in the uh, music industry. I'm noticing that more and more these days. <laughs> yeah. Everybody I talk to. Um For sure. As you mentioned the whole process, you had the record done. Did you find yourself maybe itching and thinking of the idea, tinkering with it at all once it was done and sitting there waiting for the release? Or you're like, no, I'm not touching it. It's done. This is the final product. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, You know, there's a lot of time to sit there and go back and listen to things and second guess. Uh, Not too many things. I made maybe a few little tweaks here and there, but, uh, you know, I... It, it's funny because like your taste changes, you know, mm-hmm. you, you might want some sort of song and you kind of like a certain sound. And then a year later, you're like, God, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? You know, <laughs> so fortunately, uh, I still I still like it. Uh, so I'm going to I'm just going to stick to it uh, by next year. Uh, who knows? I might be sick of that that <laughs> kind of sound. But uh, well, at least yeah. we're not going to get like a version 2.0 of the record coming out. And then they're <laughs> like, well, hey, this is the original version. Here's disc two, quote unquote, of the yeah. originals, which you guys would have heard if had I not been uh, locked down. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no, nah, pretty much just going to stick with it for a bit. You know, I, I like having the freedom, uh, you know, with the solo stuff to kind of just do whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of my other older songs are kind of all over the place, you know, from you know, more chill kind of piano stuff to more kind of alternative pop stuff. So this time I just was like, you know what, I'm, you know, I want to do rock and, you know, there's still kind of some, some, you know, synthy stuff and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, alternative sprinkles in there. But for the most part, I wanted it to, to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more rock oriented. With the older stuff, you mentioned how it was like kind of more broad stroke in terms of its sound. Uh, was that a conscious thing to go with those sounds when introducing yourself solo? Or was it kind of like, eh, we'll just put out there whatever happens that I make? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it was super premeditated or conscious, but, um, you know, I kind of just liked kind of the sounds and, and mm-hmm. just didn't really want to tinker or want to mess with it. So just kind of put it out, see see what happens and um, you know, but this time around with the, the rocks stuff, it was a conscious effort. I was like, you know, why am I messing with all this stuff that I, I don't really know? You know, um, I mean, I've always been a fan of pop and alternative, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, I've played in rock bands for over 20 years. So I was like, all right, I need to just stick with what I know here. So deciphering what you're going to use for yourself and maybe present to, you know, like uh, you guys in Breaking Benjamin, how do you decide what you're going to keep for yourself then? I think they just have uh, just a difference, you know, that's an obvious difference to me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Breaking Benjamin has a 
has a sound and and that's a sound and a, and a brand that that ben has you know cultivated quite successfully over the years and uh you know anything we kind of write uh for that band you know we keep that in mind we want to honor his his sound and his his kind of his thing you know it's his it's his baby so you know mm -hmm. we want to we want to do right by that and obviously for the fans as well you know they they uh we want to kind of uh you know live up to those expectations but uh with my stuff it's not so much there's not as much pressure which is nice and uh, you know i still i still want to make the best i can but lots of times it's just kind of a different vibe a different feel so i just kind of go with it you're releasing the record through e1 correct yes okay so that you're really releasing it through them. And again, with the pressure side of things, you're just mostly being able to have no restrictions, no handcuffs. It's you being able to present what you want. Sure. I mean, and not, not so much that that's a bad thing. I mean, cause all the stuff with breaking Benjamin, I mean, that's, that's what I want too. It's what we want, you know? Uh, you know? Oh, well, I was more so saying in the sense that like a record labels dictating to you. Cause sometimes in, in bands, I'm sure you experienced in the past, uh, the label might dictate to you. They want something certain from you in terms of a sound or something from a record sure yeah well you know with with e1 um we just kind of started with them and it's 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 really just a distribution kind of thing okay. so i don't think there's there's um you know too much control there uh so i'm kind of free to kind of do what i want there mm -hmm. for the most part Okay, so the new single's out. It's Dream Away. Take me through this video because I love the video that's out now. It is really cool. I love the effects in it and the way it's done. Um, talk to me about the inspiration behind it and what you did and what you went into it, and especially with uh, who you worked with on it. Well, thank you. Uh, first off, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, we were kind of trying to think of concepts uh, for this song. You know, the song has, uh, you know, a little bit of a dark feel uh musically but you know the, the message is is you know i wanted the message to be positive is just kind of escaping that just negative mindset and just think of happier times and and hopeful times and and you know possible hopeful times for the future um you know this was was basically um kind of a microcosm of that that kind of concept you know i i me personally i love to to just kind of escape my my day and anything that's mm -hmm. you know bugging me would just by like you know listening to music watching movies just kind of getting lost in that that uh that kind of thing so this was kind of an, an example of you know there's this there's this guy and he's gonna put on some vr and and just go into this other reality and just you know play out whatever whatever unfolds um so that was pretty much it you know i think uh there's some some visual aspects there where you know, he's he's kind of looking at his watch. He's kind of looking for some sort of recharge. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of what we were going with. And of course, you know, we threw in a car there. So that's always <laughs> that's always fun. Now, is the car yours? Was it a rental of friends? The car was a rental and I had never driven one of those before. It was a uh, jar, a Dodge Charger. OK. And uh, man, that thing flies. I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's, not in trouble, huh? it's a lot faster than my forerunner. That's for sure. But man, I, I, I got in that thing and, uh, we were, there were some other, sh you know, shots that we did that was out in the desert. So there was just like open highway and man, that thing just hauls ass. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you spend? Cause there's a lot of shots of you like driving around town in this uh, particular video. How long did you spend just driving around with the cameras on the car? Yeah, a good while. Uh, that was uh, we shot it in downtown LA, and uh, yeah, I was just kind of driving around in different different loops, and um, you know, then we would kind of stop in a parking lot, kind of regroup. All right, we need to get this kind of shot. So um, I had my basically my phone on speaker, and uh, the director <laughs> the director was in another car, and I was kind of following them in, in parts, and I was kind of you know. It was funny because, you know, we'd hit red lights and I'm just like, where am I going? I don't know what I'm doing here. You know, all the while you got You know, there's a camera on you. You're like singing along and there's cops mm -hmm. around watching you. And I'm just like, oh, God, but uh, but it, it worked out. All right. It was fun. No tickets, no stops, no nothing like that. No tickets. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a successful shoot. <laughs> 
So with the record, you talked about, uh, you know, the rock sound on it. Is Dream Away a, a, a kind of like a prelude to what we're going to hear the rest of it? Or is it different by song in terms of the, so- the sonic feel to the, the, the record? Yeah, I think uh, for the most part, um, it accurately represents the rest of the album. Um, you know, there's there's a few songs that are kind of, uh, you know, more slower, chill. There's there's a few that are a little bit more, um, you know, up-tempo, more rock stuff. But uh, I feel like that song kind of captures the feel of it. Okay, very good. Well, I, I dig the tune as a whole. You and I shot some text back and forth when it dropped. I really dug it. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Love the overall feel of it. I just love that kind of synthy style. It almost reminds me of like a, a, a modern rock song meets like an '80s tune, and I don't, and I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm a child of the '80s, so I, I grew up with all the weird, you know, synthy, uh, <laughs> new wave stuff, you know. So I love all that stuff. <clears throat> so when is this album going to drop? Because it's called This World or the Next, correct? Yes. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, right now, I, I would say spring late spring um you know with covid and everything else you know we, we've kind of just been trying to get used to to just you know being fluid with everything mm-hmm. so this is no exception um yeah still kind of planning and plotting how we're going to roll everything out so but i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that it's going to be sometime this spring okay so floater time no official date just yet um did you plan for a full album or did you did you want to try to do eps leading uh, leading to a full release because i know some bands are doing that whole thing ep 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 and then hey you can just do a whole record later sure yeah i mean the the whole model of of how things are released uh these days are are so different you know it's such a single based uh kind of thing um and then i've kind of been doing that uh over the last few years releasing a single you know, wait a little bit, release another single, but, uh, you know, and we're still going to do that, but there's going to be an album drop. You know, I, I think at first I was kind of, uh, you know, messing around with the idea of, of having two EPs, you know, mm-hmm. one kind of being more rock, another one being kind of more, you know, pop alternative, slower stuff. And, and I just was like, I'm just gonna, I, just, I felt like it was just gonna, it was a little bit too cute to just try and just do that. It's like, let's just, let's just do a record and mm-hmm. uh, stick with the rock sound and just go for it. So is it going to be a, uh, is there going to be physical releases as well as digital? Do you, are you doing CD vinyl? Yeah, I would like to, uh, I would like to have vinyls for this. Um, yeah, that's something that we've talked about and we're, we're trying to get, uh, get that all planned out. So yeah. Do you, uh, you talk about being a, a child of the eighties. I still, even though we are in the digital age, I personally love having the physical product in my hand, reading the liner notes and so forth. Do you have all that done yet or are you still working and kind of putting those pieces together? Yeah, I think we have a template. Uh, You know, we're we're still kind of messing around with it, but uh, yeah, um, that's it. (laughs) So yes. Yeah. We're still working towards the finer parts. <laughs> although, although, you know, it's like we were talking about, like when things are kind of sitting around, it's like you have the propensity to go back and maybe want to change stuff. So that's mm-hmm. the problem uh, we're having now is like, I'll, I'll, I'll decide on something and it's just like, it'll just kind of like hanker on me. And I'm just like, ah, I feel like we can change something here. And then, so <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of my own worst enemy in that way. I think almost any person who's creative is their own worst enemy in some fashion. Yeah. I just don't want to, you know, put it out and I'm, and I'm just like, man, if only I had just did this or whatever. So I just, I, I, I put it through the, uh, the litany. <laughs> your own test that you do every time. And what is there certain criteria it has to meet in your mind or is there certain steps it has to go through? No, just, uh, I just want to be able to look at it, love it, uh, feel good about it nothing is like in the back of my mind, like, well, you could have done, you know, anything Mm -hmm. like that. I don't like to have any kind of uh, loose end or variable that's just rattling around in there. So no second guess whatsoever. Well, looking forward to when the album does eventually come out. Dream Away is out now. However, the new single, the first single off of it, I want to talk about love and death because you're on a track off of that record. You've also, from what I read co-wrote a couple tracks on there as well, right? Yeah. Uh, that's one of the projects that, uh, I've been working on just this, during this 
pandemic. Um, yeah, I, uh, me and Jason, uh, we've gosh, we've worked for a few years on a few tracks, and uh, and, and then and Joe became uh, involved in the project also, and so you know we had just finished my album, and uh, so it was just it was a, a seamless kind of thing to just kind of work on this stuff with those guys because I've known them for a while, and and obviously just you know touring with with Brian and 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 hanging out with him over the years it was uh it was just super cool uh and and I was I was happy that uh they liked some of the stuff that I I threw out there for him so and you sound great on the uh the track that you featured on the hunter correct yes thank you man appreciate it yeah uh I, it's a it's a thrill i mean um i couldn't believe I, I couldn't believe i still don't believe it i'm just like wow i can't believe uh I'm, I'm on this, you know? So if, if, if you did, if 10 years ago, whenever we were hanging out and you would have come out and been like, man, you're going to be doing all this, this stuff, you know, and I've been like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so well, I remember all those years ago, you and I first met uh, during your time with Adelita's as well. I remember when the news dropped that you were in breaking, I saw, shot you a text. I'm like, Whoa, dude, what's going on here? Um, if you don't mind me asking, take me back through that point. You know, when you got the call, what all went down? Uh, if you can get into any of the details that led sure. into you being a part of Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, I uh, I really just kind of felt like I was at a place where I needed some sort of change. Uh, you know, I, I just, um, you know, I, I, I'd been there for a while with, uh, with Adelita's way. Um, you know, like the dudes, they're great. They're talented. They're still hitting it hard. Uh, but I just kind of felt like I just wanted to do something, uh, on my own for a bit. And, um, so I, I took that time and worked on my first kind of solo EP. And after a little while, um, you know, um, actually even before that, you know, I, I wrote this kind of resignation kind of, uh, you know, note on, on Facebook, just, you know, thanking the band, thanking the managers and, mm -hmm. and of course the fans and everything for all their support. And, um, and I guess Ben, Ben saw it. And we had done some touring uh, with Breaking Band a few years prior. And I guess, I don't know, I, it was right at the time where he was kind of looking for uh, new members or potential members. And, and um, so kind of started the dialogue that way and eventually led to auditions and, and uh, getting together with everybody. And, and here we are now. <laughs> and what a cast of characters it is. I mean, the band that has been built as the reformed breaking Benjamin is totally a strong one with all the people that are involved. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. I, you know, I guess in, in years past and even, you know, gosh, it's, it's, it's been so long since we've toured now. It's just, uh, you know, now I can say years or, a year, <laughs> or coming up on a year, but, uh, you know, I, I walk into some of these, places that were playing arenas and stuff. And I'm just like, I keep waiting on someone to tap me on the shoulder and be like, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> so I keep on, I, I'm very uh, grateful and uh, appreciative of uh, every second of it. So that's awesome. And of course you're very immersed in the band doing all the interviews and stuff. I'm going to pull this up real quick. This was actually one of the first ones. I, I believe is. I was going to bring this up. I was going to bring this up to you because this, this comes back to me all the time. Really? Okay, explain. All the time. Because of the motion that happens in this. Every once in a while, someone will th will throw me some sort of picture or a meme or something. They'll say, I, Keith. <laughs> I, Keith. It? Me, rock hard. Ah, there, it there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course, Ben jumped right on. It was just like, I'm going to embarrass the shit out of him right here. And here it is, living for all eternity on the internet. So, thanks, Wes. I did not realize I keep was a thing. I mean, look, it's not it's it's not that big a thing, but every once in a while, I'll get a little <laughs> post, and some I'll see somebody say I keep, and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Apparently so, and you well, there I, there I am to be a part of it. I just look, I, can't, it. I can't help it. I'm awkward. I'm awkward. I get tongue tied. I get nervous. Uh, <laughs> this is why I usually am the quiet one in, in mm -hmm. Breaking Band. I, I'm usually the one that's kind of just like, I don't, I'm not good at these. So, but with this kind of thing, with my solo stuff, I've pretty much been forced <laughs> to just get over that and just do it and just talk. So, got to be the public speaker now. But yet you were the front man in your own band. 
years ago. Yeah, and uh, I was just as awkward back then. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it didn't get any better over the years. <laughs> that is intriguing. I uh, talked about the love and death thing. You were, you know, co-writing a couple songs there. Is there one song that people might be surprised about that you co-wrote or that you might, that you appear on that uh, maybe they don't know about? Um, gosh, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe hopefully some stuff that, that hasn't come out yet. Uh, okay. well, that remains to be seen. We'll see how everything works out, but, um, yeah, it's been a busy year. Um, just been trying to, like I said, stay busy, stay positive and, uh, you know, use the time that I have while I'm home because, uh, once everything gets fired up again, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, you know, right. we'll, I'll be busy out there. Yeah. I'm sure you will not see your house for quite some time once it all kicks back up again. Right. Um, when you write this record, I'm sure you have some leftover stuff sitting around. Is there a huge hard drive or notepad of things that you just have that you either haven't used for this particular record or breaking band or just uh, demos or riffs that you have laying around? There's a few things. Um, for the most part, I, I usually don't have too many leftover things. I, I pretty much just kind of decide on what I want to work on and I focus my energy on that and, um, mm. You know, whenever it's done, it's done. Um, sometimes there's some things that, um, you know, don't get used for stuff. and But it's not too much. Um, yeah. There's a few little things on my computer. There's a notebook full of gibberish and lyrics here and there. But, uh, yeah, I, I usually like to just, like, like say if I'm starting on something new, I like to just have a clean slate. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing you know preconceived just try and just start fresh i feel like i'm a little bit more creative that way okay well i to wrap up here i i don't know if you ever heard of this game and i, I like to throw it out there every once in a while it's called mixtape never heard of it okay so it's uh called the song and scenario card game so think like cards against humanity if you will for a second to a certain right. degree so yeah. i'm gonna throw out a scenario to you it's all music based okay so it's basically like a question. You give me an answer back, but it's all either. It's mostly song title related. All right. Okay. So like the first one I'm going to throw to you is the theme song to the sitcom based on your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's like, what? Let's go Saved by the Bell. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Many of times there. What song would uh, sum up your adolescence? Uh, this is not still sitcoms, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> I love this game yeah. because it throws people off all the time. Gosh, my adolescence. I mean, I still feel like I'm an adolescent, so. Uh, dude, I'm 37. I'm right there with you. Yeah, man. I got an 11 year old, and sometimes he he may he 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 sounds like a more of an adult than I do. <laughs> I look at him like, what, really, man? Come on. I know the struggle is real. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> gosh, um, I don't know. Adolescence. Uh, All right. So let's say let's just say, um, God, this is so lame. Because it's such a cliche song. Um, you know what? No, let's go. Let's go with. Um, let's go with Inner Sandman. Okay. Yeah. I can really see that because I know you're a Metallica fan. Yeah, I, I loved it growing up, and uh, kind of started my whole, you know, desire to play guitar. So. Okay. Now I'm gonna love throw one last one out, and then this will be the last one I'll torture you with. All right. It's late night. You and the guys in Breaking Benjamin get out of the bus in a deserted town, like at a bus stop, and a dance party song breaks out. What song are you all dancing to? Party all the time, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, still a hit. There you go. See, look at that. You did that one just without without even thinking twice. That was easy. <laughs> Classic. Well, there you go. Any last uh, words you want to say before we wrap up here? Sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, man, dude, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure as always, an honor as always. Um, and to everybody watching, 
thanks for all your support. Please check out my song, Dream Away. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff, at KJ Wallen. Um, yeah, till we meet again, hopefully uh, out on tour sometime. But until then, thanks for all the support. Love y'all. Absolutely. Stay on the line, all right? Yep. Thanks for checking out this edition of the Styles Cast. Make sure you head on over to stylescast.com for all episodes and hit that subscribe button so we can see you next time.